hit at the goal line. Here comes Janine Becky. Janine Becky all by herself in the penalty box. She shoots and she Be scores. The right side. Janine it's Becky. Becky. Touchdown, Tonight. Red Raiders. This is our time. This is our time to rise up higher than ever before. It's our time to show this country how proud we are and how special it is to be a Texas Tech. Red Raider Nation, we ride together. Kicking off a six-game road trip, Texas Tech soccer picked up two huge shutout victories on the road this past weekend against Arizona State and Arizona. Game day, though, is just the reward of hours and hours of practice and team building. So what exactly goes into a Texas Tech soccer practice? Head coach Tom Stone lets Red Raider Weekly in behind the scenes and mic'd up. There is no doubt in my mind that you are stronger today than you were a week ago. But we are now in the heat of the season. We should wake up every morning excited about the environment that we all find ourselves in. And remember, Five years from now, who knows? Two years ago, who knows? But right now, it is good. And you got a choice to make every single weekend. What's the feeling you want on Sunday night? Pay attention to the details. Janine, good job. That's that Valor Education. Play. Two, three. Got it. And got hammered. You got to like that. You know, I, I think the players would say that it's a really intense environment. We don't really like them to be standing around much at all, move to the next exercise pretty quickly, be real efficient in training. Um, I don't adhere to the philosophy that you have to hit for certain principles of each practice. I don't necessarily, we don't necessarily follow always the book on progressional practices, which a lot of people do, but there's always a topic, there's always a course of purpose, and uh, we just ask the girls to be super intense while we're active. Uh, give us their focus and get out, you know, and sometimes that means practice an hour and 15 minutes and so be it. On Thursdays, uh, sometimes it's 60 minutes and we're gone. Late in the season, even our longer Tuesday practice could be an hour. It just depends on how much we accomplish and uh, they've kind of figured that out. So we usually have a pretty uh, efficient, intense training. Come on, Beth, come on, Beth. Closer, closer, closer. That's it. Good, I like it. Nice, Beth. Yeah, I think it's a, certainly a culmination of the last six seasons of just you know, you've got to instill confidence in the girls that you have. You can't tear them down and say, oh, why were, why were you unsuccessful at this time or that time? You've got to make the ones you inherit the best that you can make them. And that usually starts with making them fitter. Because if you find a team that wasn't winning, usually they weren't very fit, they weren't very strong. Once they get stronger and fitter, they start to have some individual confidence. And the whole year you're trying to develop them technically. So now they're better on the ball, they're fitter, they're stronger, and then you say, okay, now what can we do with this, these new weapons that we've, we've created from within? I would much rather coach, the hardest, the best players is obviously the most fun for coaches, but what I love is when other coaches will say, oh, it must be easy to coach that group. You know, I had a team in the pros that had several of the best players in the world. They're like, oh, that was easy, just rolled the ball out. Of course, that's hilarious, because those are the hardest teams to coach exactly because of what you said the management of those personalities and those egos. And you've got a high school All-American coming off the bench. How do you keep her engaged? How do you keep her confident? How do you teach her that, look, to be on a big time team, you gotta come off the bench with a great player. You can't just have 11 great players. You gotta have 20 or more. So you're exactly right. When you get a team with a lot of really good players that all expect to start and contribute, you've gotta manage that group. Get in front of her and then run over there asking for the ball way over here. Come on with yeah. Come on. All we're doing is getting her the heck out of here. You can't run at her, because she may release to you to go to the ball, but just run over here. She'll go with you. You know, what is there really to fear in a, in, a, in a game that you're playing that you've trained hard for, you've prepared hard for? If you play your tail off as hard as you can, you shouldn't even fear losing, because you gotta walk up the field knowing that you gave them everything you had, and if you do, you're gonna have a sense of growth and a sense of pride so that when you are ready, when you are fully prepared, when the team is stocked with enough talent, you're gonna be ready to knock off those same teams. So whether we play a team that we feel like we're gonna have an easy time with or a team that we know is gonna re require our 100% um, execution, just fear just can't, can't be a part of it. All right, let's break it down. Let's go. Let's go, Hags. Tech will continue its road swing this weekend on the road at UC Davis and UC Santa Barbara. As always, you can keep up to date with the Red Raiders at TexasTech.com.